Bows and arrows, the main equipment of archery, were originally invented for hunting or warfare purposes. With modern developments, they are no longer useful in their original fields, and so they are the main equipment used in the recreation on Olympic sport, archery. The shooting of an arrow involves the application of a series of physical principles, including projectile motion, forces, Newton's laws, and transfer of energy. An archer has potential energy stored in her muscles. Once the bowstring is pulled back, there is potential energy transferred from her muscles and stored in the bowstring. The release of the bowstring transfers the potential energy to kinetic energy of the flying arrow. Let's take a closer look at the energy transfer between the bow and the arrow. A bow is essentially a spring. In this diagram, we can see two different states of a bow, braced and full drop. A bow stores potential energy as it is pulled back and converts this energy to kinetic energy when it goes back to its original position. The amount of energy that can be stored in a bowstring varies depending on the shape and the length of a bow. In a simple straight bow with no special features, the bowstring has the capacity to store 14,000 units of energy. This is the area under a forced draw curve. In terms of length, longer bows store a lot of energy compared to shorter bows. However, longer bows tend to bounce back more slowly. Shorter bows' ability to recoil faster makes them ideal for hunting purposes. The amount of energy stored also depends on the material that the bow is made of. This chart shows the energy storage capacity of different materials. Modern bows are mostly made from glass fiber that stores a lot of energy for a lighter mass. Today's official Olympic bows are called recurve bows. These bows also include a stabilizer that increases the fly's stability and reduces vibration. In archery, the bow and the arrow form a system. When the string is released, the stored energy drives the system forward until the string reaches its brace state and stops. The bow, in a state of inertia, continues to move forward. Part of the kinetic energy of the system is responsible for the arrow's flight. Part of it is turned into the bowstring's vibration, and part of it is turned into sound. The flight of an arrow follows a projectile path mainly influenced by gravity and air resistance. In a vacuum, the arrow would fly with a constant horizontal velocity and a vertical velocity that would accelerate as a uniform rate due to gravity. Because of gravity's pull, the arrow must not be shot parallel to the ground, but rather it should be aimed at an angle higher than the target. In these simulations, we can see that when the arrow is shot parallel to the ground, it falls to the ground, unable to reach the target. Yet, when the angle is too large, the arrow still misses the target. Therefore, depending on the desired horizontal distance, the archer must be able to pick an appropriate angle. In a normal atmosphere, the arrow's horizontal velocity is not quite constant because of air resistance, so the archer's initial energy input should adjust accordingly. Learning how to work with these physical concepts requires a lot of practice, but by understanding them, hitting the bullseye becomes an easier task.